Hi, I'm Donna DeMaria, the original creator of the One Stroke Painting Technique, and I'm at Plaid Studio, and guess what? November is my birthday, and November's flower is chrysanthemums. So I am excited to be painting with you today and creating some beautiful canvas or you can paint it on lots of other surfaces that we have with our folk art multi-surface paint which is rich and creamy and you guys who have been painting with it are falling in love with it I know. So let me share with you that what we have in a chrysanthemum is lots of variety of colors and did you know that the chrysanthemum means powerful strong it's an emblem of love or friendship and the different colors mean something special. So I have painted many colors here to share with you. And what I want you to see that we're gonna learn here is a different background, go figure that. And I'm gonna teach you all of these different positions of a chrysanthemum and how we put a deep, pretty center in there where they're starting to bloom out. And we're even gonna do a clay pot that's orange so that we have bright, wonderful colors. It's fall, so let's get started painting chrysanthemums. Okay, so when you see this background where the chrysanthemum is gonna be painted on here, I put some purple shading at the end. This is dioxazine purple here. And then the blue on here is Prussian blue with wicker white. So let's go over here because mostly what we're gonna see is the Prussian blue and wicker white first. Now here is where I drew in with a pencil, I drew in the pot that I wanted. So whatever container you decide, I did a pot here and see I've got like four fingers kind of spread. And then here I did five fingers going up for your height. The other way to look at this is if this is halfway, I'm just slightly lower, about an inch lower than halfway. Whichever way helps you see this. The other thing is if I was coming down here halfway, if I divided my canvas in half, then you'll see most of these flowers, how far they hang over halfway. And if that helps you use that little tip. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my foam plate. Okay, so this is wicker white and we're gonna pick up the Prussian blue. Now I'm gonna take my fingers and wet a little bit on here and I'm going to grab the white and I'm not gonna worry about where the pot is, I'm gonna do the whole background here. So I've got white, and wicker white here and a little bit of Prussian blue and I'm gonna work this in just a little bit because I don't want it very, uh, really, really blue. All right, so look at this. So I do intensify a little bit more there, but this is what I'm gonna do on this. I'm gonna, on this canvas, I'm gonna keep picking up white, which actually you can see I need more white. All right, and I'm going right over where I put those flowers. I'll tell you, those circles where I was gonna put the flowers were just for me to see how far out I was gonna do this. Um, our painted colors, so look, I picked up more. All right. Now I really just want to get a cast of blue. So the Prussian blue makes a really nice color here. Then I can come in with a little bit heavier and I can pounce it, which we've done before. And even in the corner then I'm gonna be putting purple, the dioxazine purple. All right, so, and along here, now I'm not worried if it gets into the pot some, but you see the movement I'm doing? I want to see movement back here. All right, so now, see it's got a little bit bluer than I really want, and I'll show you what happens with that. Okay? Now, I want to do all the edges, so let's get those all done. All right, so I just come out here, and this makes it wonderful because they can just um, if you give it as a gift or you keep it yourself, you can just hang it right away and not even worry about a frame. And then with the wrap canvas, it makes it nice. So I'm gonna come here and intensify that corner a little bit. And same thing over here. Okay, so now I have more of a white cast than I want. So let me just put this to the side 
and show you that I can take my three quarter inch brush and I can pick up pure the wicker white without any other color, real pure looking. And I can even get more of that look on the background, okay? Isn't that kind of good? There we go. See the movement? That's what I want. Seeing some slip slap looks. Okay. I think y'all can see that pretty good. And as you go here, before you get some of the flowers on, if you feel like, or even after, if you feel like you need a little bit more white in there or blue, then you can come back and get your colors. Okay? So there we go. Now what I want you to see is the flowers. I'm going to let this area dry a little bit, but I can take my pencil. And if it's a darker background, I use chalk, as you've seen me do before. Now, what, what I want you to see is that I'm going to do three circles here to show you the triangle where I'm going to put the flowers. So it could be flowers, it could be th three different colors, or three different sizes, okay? Now, I told you that when I came here, and the same thing on this painting, you can even take a piece of chalk and show where half and half is. So you can quarter up your design, and that helps you, all right, see that this flower here is on the other side of that halfway mark. So right there, so right in here is where I'm going to put this little piece of a flower there, okay? And I have a stem coming up here with a little piece there, all right? So right down here, I have this one, this one, this one. It looks like it's in a row, but we don't want it to be in a row. But, I, but what's going to happen is we're going to put another big circle here for a big blossom. See that? So one, two, three. Those three circles make a triangle. And then you can go one, two, three, and there's another triangle. So that really helps you when you're designing your flowers. When I worked in the fresh fl flowers with my sister and my mom's little shop, I, we learned a lot about laying out the designs, one triangle after another, and a lot of y'all do flowers, so that makes it nice. So I have little ones here just to show you kind of a layout. I'm going to let that sit a minute, and we're going to create our clay pot here. So what happens with the pot is that it's got, um, it, I made the orange color there by using apple red and I already have that paint ready for us apple red and moon yellow okay so this is in my double loader I put some floating medium in here I put out some green colors our, our uh, citrus green and our sap green these are the colors of the flowers which are wicker white moon yellow and uh, yellow ochre so these two, the apple red and the moon yellow, believe it or not, make a great orange, okay? Now, I did also put that inside the center of the flowers, all right? So I want to just base coat this so that we can go practice our leaves and our flowers and then come back and it should be dry enough to start, okay? So I'm going to scoot this up just a little bit and come in here with the mixture of the two colors first. So I'm going to put a little bit of red in here first. This is the apple red. And see, very quickly you can get this color. All right. So you decide how orange you want this to be. It's OK if it's darker or a little bit lighter. You decide. And then I shaded later with apple red and floating medium. Um, so look, this is going to be right across here. And what I want you to realize, this is your 12 flat. And I did mix with this, but what's also nice is that um, it's a good size to get this lip on top of the clay pot. Now this lip came out a little bit more, but what I want you to see is where not to worry. I don't worry at that top edge because leaves are going to be over it. So don't stress over things you don't need to worry about. But I do want to go around the edge of the clay pot. 
All right, and then this edge right here on the side of the pot, I do want that to be nice and clean. So I'm gonna go on the chisel and come down. You tend to think you can lay it like this and pull it, but what happens is it, it gives you a big ridge and it won't look as good as if you chisel edge that. I'm gonna turn it a little bit and now pull my color down. So to get a nicer, smoother look, I'm gonna use my three quarter now. So the three quarter, I'm loading all the color on here. You can still see my ridge there. And we're gonna pull a nice coat down and we might have to get more than one coat. And I like different colors in here, kind of like clay pots have different colors. All right, so I'll clean that up a little bit more. Do my sides. So I don't want white canvas to show, okay? So that's hard for some people don't see that it's showing, but it's little teeny white specks. And it looks way better if you cover that, okay? So I'm going both ways just because we've got a fabric canvas has got texture so we have to go both ways sometimes to cover okay and I'm gonna do it down here too and in my pot here I like to do that while we have the color in our brush just in case while we're blending if we run out of color now there are a couple spots I don't like here but when we come back and touch it up um, it will cover that well. But this is what I want you to see. When this starts drying, just a little hint, see what happens. When this starts drying, it starts getting a film over it. So if I keep coming back and keep working it, you're gonna pull it up and get spots. So I find out, I find that it's a lot easier to let that totally dry. And then if it needs more paint, we can add more paint, all right? So I'm gonna clean this brush and what we wanna do is we want to, I also want to put my sponge. I don't want to leave the sponge out. So I kind of fold it and I put it in a little cubby here of wet water so that it doesn't um, get dried in my sponge. I'm also going to put this to the side for a minute. All right, let that dry for a minute. And let's work on this worksheet. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make an eraser. So I fold it up in quarters, my paper towel. And what I'm gonna do here is the paint's made with like a little sealer in it. So when we're stroking, if we don't wipe it right off after we're through practicing, then it's gonna dry on us, all right? So it's gonna dry on here, and then we're gonna have a hard time scrubbing it off. So let's look at our first stroke that we wanna learn. All right, so this is my blending stroke to see if I'm, how I'm gonna get the color. So I'm gonna pick up these two colors, the moon yellow and the wicker white, and I'm gonna work it into my brush. Now I push really hard in my double loader, and I want you to see, I split the brush here, my number 12 flap, and I'm working it really fast and hard here to get it into the bristles, all right? If, if your brush is splitting, there's not enough paint in the bristles. Okay, so we can just practice with this yellow, but we can also dip a little bit of yellow ochre and pick it up and give you another shade here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come right across here and see if I've got the blend that I want. And you really need a nice blend from darker to light and then wipe it off and you're ready to go. All right, so when I, when I talked to you earlier about, look, we're gonna do a straight daisy stroke you push and pull, push down and pull. So touch, lean towards me and pull. All right, so when you pull, you're lifting. So it's heavier and thinner, all right? So when you're right here, see the arrows? This is your worksheet where you're gonna push, stand up, stand up, stand up and curve. Push on the chisel, this is your chisel. And you're gonna push here harder and stand up. And that's how you make, this is a skinny daisy, this is a heavier daisy, and this right here, pushing down, is a really heavy daisy. So as you're coming across this flower on the chrysanthemum, there might be a couple that are straight like this, but almost all of them, we keep picking up paint, we push down and we 
turn this way or we push down and we pull this way. And also you have these right here, push and lift, touch, push and lift. Now when I say push, I mean pressure. So push down, pressure and lift, pressure, lift. But we're on the chisel edge as we're doing that. So if you lay it down and the, watch the handle on my brush, that's real important. Watch this. I'm going to touch this, I'm going to push down, and you, if you lean it forward slightly, it rounds, this flat brush makes a rounded tip, and then you stand up. But you have the beauty of when you stand up, it's a nice chisel, okay? So let's wipe this all off, and I am going to do a few of these petals, but then what we're going to do is I'm going to add a few leaves. So let me show you, see? You know, when I, this is dry, I, sh I could have wet, it, wet the uh, paper towel a little bit. And I don't want you wetting it too much because then it makes a pretty sloppy mess, all right? So there you go. All right, so there's a couple of things when we're doing the leaves I want you to see. One is there's this long slender leaf. So there's the citrus green and the sap green, and I left the yellow on there, okay? Because that is a nice blend to go with your leaf right there. And so I'm fast. It's already got paint in the inside of the brush, remember? So all we did is put some paint on the outside of the brush. Okay, so I just want you to try one of these. I'm going to start at an angle. See where it's at here? I'm going to push down as wide as I want it. And then I'm going to slide and stand up. Okay? So pressure makes the fullness of the leaf. And stand up, stand up, stand up to the chisel and lift, and that's the end, okay? So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna pull another paper towel here. What we're gonna do is wipe this off, and I'm gonna flip over. This is a really big leaf, but we're gonna go do a smaller leaf on the other side, okay? Just wipe that off. Oops, I tell everybody to fold this into quarters no wad of paper towels in your hand because when you go to wipe this you mess up everything else that you're working with and i can tell you that from experience okay so what we're going to do next is take our 12 and i want to show you with the 12 we're going to go right back to our colors see this now we don't need medium when i'm working here but on our project we will dip into the medium and work it in so I just want you all to see that in case I forget to say that because sometimes I do. All right, so sometimes you might just need this uh, citrus green and flatten it and come, and sometimes you might need the sap green where I would dip and flatten and gum. And you can paint out of that little cubby there too in your double loader. All right, see these V's? This is where my chisel would start, okay? So now watch, I want you to start and I want you to only push down as hard as I push down. Do you see that? Now the first time you do each stroke, I want you to go slow. So see this, we're going really slow. All right, now they always look better when you go quicker. But when I start out, I want to go slow. So I feel the movement, guys, all right? Okay, so we're gonna do this side. I'm gonna go get more paint. Remember, I can get it right here. Okay, now this is gonna be exciting for you as you see a leaf happen with two strokes. So watch this. Now I'm gonna put them next to each other. And like I said, stroke quicker and that look really looks good. So look, now I'm on the chisel of the brush and you're just pulling that stem two thirds into it, all right? Two thirds into the leaf. So the air, so these two lines are to give you a starting point. All right, so remember that. You go one, two, three, start scrubbing and standing up, all right? So now we're gonna wipe off and are y'all ready to go paint? All right, now you can turn off this video and turn it back on and practice more before you go to your piece and just watch it over and over till you feel comfortable, okay? So what we're gonna do is now, I've got paint all over here. 
All right, now I'm ready. I still don't want to touch this very much yet. But what I want to do is I'm going to get another 12 here. And I wet it first, and I'm going to pick up the colors that we wanted to use. Remember, we're going to use the moon yellow and the wicker white. And I'm going to pick up some yellow ochre. Now, what I want you to see is that we're going to blend um, colors. That's what we just did, blend colors. But I'm going to do different colors, occasionally picking up different ways than we just did. So I don't want to confuse you. So let's start up here on this little bud up here. So right up here at the top, I had a little bud. And I pushed down. And I don't want to stand up. I don't want to push down too much. All right, now can you see the color? I touch, lift, look at that. Isn't that fun? All right, so I have a couple over here. Now this is a really small bud that's just opening up. And every once in a while I pick up here, or remember I can go right here. Now because it's fresh, I am not going to put a lot of dark in this. But I can come in with a little bit of color because look what happens. If I put a little bit of color in here, see how it gives you depth? All right, usually I put the dark in the back, but I thought that would look good on this one. All right, now let's go ahead and work on these two because these two finish my triangle. And I can put a stem in and then I can add leaves before I put my other flowers. All right. So that was a pretty simple little bud. I actually, let's do it again because we have one here. Touch, lean, stand up. And we're not leaning too much because I want to be on the chisel. All right. And every time I leave the painting, what am I doing? I'm picking up paint. So push, lift. All right. Now I'm going to get a little bit of white and worker white and moon yellow. Now, I'm going to turn it around because I want the white petal, the wicker white petal, to be right there. Okay, so now I'm letting the dark yellow ochre be in the back. Now, look what happens. I'm going to come right there. See how good the wicker white shows? Right here. Now, I am putting a lighter color and I'm doing it on top of the darker colors. So it just gives you a different look than what I did over here. I put the yellow ochre on top. All right, so let's do the back of a flower here. So, so far I'm not building that full mom that you're gonna see um, the center of on this chrysanthemum, all right? So let's start, I've got all three colors going here, all right? So in the background over here, I am going to start, and now I don't want it the same height, so I'm going to come down a little bit more. And I drew my pencil there, but it's okay, because we're going to cover everything if I kind of change my, my shape here a little bit. So look. All right. Now, I do one in the middle. I should do that one first. And then I have these curving this way and these curving this way. All right, so now this is my first row. All right, so you see I got a little bit darker on those. So let me pick up some more white. Let's even pick up the moon yellow instead of the wicker white first. And make sure that you can see a layer, all right? If you can't see it, I still have to get a little bit of yellow ochre so you can see it. So that's the key. See, the moon yellow took over that petal, so I actually did need, oops. Let's wipe this in. So these are single strokes, and you need to pick up paint almost every stroke. All right, so now I start curving it. So see, we want it to come about right there. Do y'all see that? All right, so now I'm going to add some more wicker white. And remember, I can come right here to that blending area. Lean, pull, there's the first one. And then we're going to start curving it. So see how that wicker white shows up there? All right. And then I'm going to get a little bit more. And the key on doing the chrysanthemum is making sure you can see different layers. So I'm going to come back in with a little bit more of the moon yellow. See how that 
So that's going to help. Now, this is the thing. I have this one kind of straight. So let's make this one at an angle over here because I would probably have liked to tilt it a little bit more, but it's okay still because flowers come straight up like that. All right. Now, so far, we have the same stroke. This is with, no pr with less pressure. This is more pressure. All right, and we're gonna put some other greenery on the bottom of this. All right, so this one I want facing out, and this one I'm gonna show the back of it. So if my stem's gonna be right here, all right, it's definitely not gonna be yellow. And I pick up more color again. All right, so the first one I wanted to do is come right under here. So see, I'm curving inward. A curve this way and a curve this way. All right, so when we come in with our green stem, let me just show you really quick. I'm going to go right back with some medium there. All right, so right in here, just to show you, so that stem is going to be in the back of it. And this one's going to come down here and pull in. This one's going to come right here. See, I do the little daisy strokes again. They're just chisel strokes. You see that? Chisel, but very skinny. All right, same thing here. All right. Now, what happens here is that's the underneath and on, way underneath. And then here, we're going to come. Let's get some more yellow ochre. And I do the center one. Now I want you to start curving these from here. And pick up some moon yellow. Now see what happens is I don't see this quite as well. All right, so I did come in here, a little bit more white. And see how nice the layers with different colors? It's gonna really help this look better. All right. I did touch the green a little bit there, which is fine. All right. So, right in here, we have the back of that flower and the stems coming back in there. So when you're taking pictures of flowers, be sure to get side views and buds and underneath, because you'll see some fun ones where the shot's underneath. All right, so right in here, I'm going to grab this just in case the greenery of the leaves do not cover it, all right? Because sometimes it peeps out, all right? So I'm going to wait on this flower here, and I'm going to start putting the greenery in. And the first thing that you guys saw was I picked up some yellow and my, so moon yellow, citrus green, and some sap green, all right? and. I came right through here first. Right under this flower, I want to be able to come down. That's the smooth one. This is a 12 flat. And I came in a few places here. So lean, lean it really hard. Actually, that's another daisy stroke. It's the same stroke you've been doing, but I'm pulling, pulling longer. And I'm turning. So isn't that kind of fun? All right, now the leaves that I added on mine that came in here, I think y'all can see these. These leaves up here, those I put in after. Right now I'm worried about all of these in the background there. And actually this one too, remember I said I'm gonna wait on this because I'm not sure what that's gonna be. And so we'll put that in before we put the big flowers in. All right, so I came up all in here and some of these are just short little strokes, push and lift get more paint and I kind of covered all this which is fine so what you're going to do is keep getting paint and I can even come in here with moon yellow added to it because that color looks really nice and see I have the little simple strokes in here push hard I don't want to mess up my picture uh, where I've got the stems going because I like that look all right so we put a few of those there put a bigger one here 
and I really just wanted a lot of green in here, but let's do some of the um, bigger leaves here. The ones that we uh, did two sides to, all right? So if we come right here, remember we did this, all right? Now I'm curving it a little bit than we did on the worksheet. So see that? And I stand up. And right here, it went right over that leaf. A little bit of dark green here. There. And then we pull a stem right into there. All right. Now, I want to make sure that covers and the orange doesn't show up there as much. So I can get a little bit more of the sap green. And then pull the stem in, all right? So over here, I, I'm gonna have these come out from underneath this flower over here. So I want another one of these little leaves here. And we pulled the stem. So I want you to think the leaves are going out and away. So what direction would they be? These are hanging over um, into where the pot is. And it doesn't hurt to put a few extra leaves if you're not sure. And then as we paint the flowers, it's okay if they peep out from behind, all right? So I just wanted some of these in here. Let's get some more. I'm gonna get a teeny bit of medium. Okay, so right in here, I wanna cover that area. There we go. And like I said, we might cover that whole leaf with a flower, but I want it in there. So I have those going up. We're gonna put another one here. When it's dry like this, look at that. We just restroke it. That's the beauty, I think, of one stroke painting is if we're unhappy with something, we reload the paint, the brush with more paint and stroke over it. So I want that stem to be hidden. So I stroked back over that. And I'm not worrying about putting stems in these little ones unless you really feel like it needs it. But right now we're good. And then up here, right in here, watch this. We're gonna touch the corner. We're gonna lean slightly and we're gonna stand up. Okay. I'm gonna come here, lean and stand up. All right. So we're hanging these over. So let's see, as we're laying our next flowers in here, how much we actually cover. I'm going to have one way over here, but what's going to determine all this is the big flower that we're going to put right here. And then I ended up covering another flower in here. So I gave you an idea in the beginning where I wanted to put it, but then I got carried away and hung it over a little bit more, which is fine. One thing, one little trick I've done before is if I decided that the flower is going to be below here, but like say right in here, I will go ahead and do my greenery like that. And I can take and wipe off just right there if I'm in a hurry. <laughs> and then when I paint there, it won't pick up so much green. All right. So what I'm going to do now is let's look at how we do the center of the chrysanthemum, all right? I'm gonna pick up the apple red and the moon yellow, and I'm going to actually add purple in it later, but right now I want you to see that to create the um, center, rich looking center, I had this color in here first, and I have one going there and one going out here, replacement one two I remember I had three so half of our pots missing so this flower is hanging all of these are hanging over this way so there probably are some more over here I'm sure okay all right now I can I did leave some of this color of uh, this reddish you know the apple red and moon yellow mix I've left some of it as I did the bottom uh, petals coming up, but I will just go in and touch it. So sometimes I leave the inside my brush like you just saw me wipe it. But on this 
on this flower, I wanted to go ahead and wash it out so that we're ready to go. All right, so the first thing is if I get the moon yellow and yellow ochre, okay? Lots of paint, see that? Lots, 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 okay? Now, when I'm here, I wanna, if I turn this so I'm facing this flower this way, it makes it really easy for me to see what I'm gonna do next. All right, so I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to stroke the back petals. Can you see that? So they're darker and they're in there, all right? And I'm gonna take another brush and just come right back and put this right back in there. And remember I said we're gonna shade it with some other color, but I just want that in there so you can see that those, these petals right here were from behind. All right, so let's get white and yellow, work this in, a little bit of yellow ochre. All right, so now what happens is I'm going to come all the way around here, right in here deciding where I want that center to be, all right? I'm alternating what colors I pick up. I'm not really doing white right now. I'm the wicker white. I'm using the um, yellow ochre and the moon yellow. But you gotta keep it fresh. You see how often I'm picking up more? We wanna keep it fresh. Now, right in here, there we go. Right in there, I wasn't happy because I wasn't seeing it strong enough. So I'm just dipping the corner and I'm lifting, okay? So y'all see the, I even like the ridges because I think it helps to get the look I want. All right, so now I'm gonna pick up some white and start working this in a little bit, but I still have the strong yellow on the outside. Now look how much I'm adding right here. I'm still curving, but I'm layering out right out here. It's okay if the green shows through a little bit. That gives us some depth. I'm gonna wipe that excess off my brush. Okay, so the inside of the brush still has lots of paint, all right? Now, look, push left, push left. All right, I'm adding little bits of white. Now, as you can see, as I'm coming around, I'm getting the fatness of the, the um, chrysanthemum. And I'm also, every once in a while, flipping the brush. Okay. There we go. All right. So I go back to my, my yellow ochre and moon yellow, and I do another layer right into that white. Now, if you see this, look, I push down and lift heavier to round it in here, all right? Now, alternating these colors give you the yummy look that we want, okay? But see how I push hard? I need to push hard to see all that look. Now, I'm gonna come in here with wicker white again, and I'm gonna put a little bit in here but I start doing the petals that are hanging, all right? So we have dark in the back, we have lighter in the front. Now, you decide how many you want, but I decided from here, if they started dropping downward, it would be right here, okay? Push, lift, push, lift, and these go from this side, all right? Yeah, I got a little bit of white mixed in there so that it would give me a better blend right there. All right, so I can come higher. This is when I decide if I'm gonna be higher or not, but this is the one that I think is kind of featured in this painting. So I can not, not push hard, look at this. I can stay up on the chisel a little bit more Okay, and then I can bring some down too. Now this is when I brought 
a little bit of that orange mix. A little bit. See, doesn't that make it nice? Just little bits. Okay, so the whole key as you're doing that flower is to get those pretty colors. See, this is all alternated colors, but this starts bringing that feature color in. All right? So this guy, I'm going to really hang him over. So let's add him out here a little bit more. So let's get our apple red and our yellow again. Okay, so just... I want to show you exactly how I create because I have an idea and then I slowly change it. Okay. So if I'm here, I'm going to wipe my brush clean. I'm going to go back to my loading area. See this? This is my blending area, actually. All right. So when I worked on this one, I want this to be outside and we really don't see the ones from behind because it's really turned over, leaning over quite a bit. All right. So I'm going to come right in here. I'm going to turn it around. Whenever it's easier for you guys, turn your whole canvas around. Some people feel like they can't turn it around when they're painting, but you can. Whatever is easy for you, OK? Because if it's easier for you to pull the stroke, I also have paint all up my ferrule. Let's get that off. All right, so I want to make sure that I see a little bit of the orange tone there, but not, see, I got to keep picking up paint because I don't want it to take over. There we go. All right, so those are the important strokes first thing. I put some wicker white with the moon yellow to get it brighter. Look at that. That's better. All right, so... Every flower you're going to make is going to turn out different than my flower or the flower you did before, and that's fine. All right, so look, we're going to come in here, and I'm looking for layers of this flower. See that? Push down and pull. Now see right here it looks a little muddy because of what I did, so I can come right in here. So see, it's easy to fix it if you feel like it needs more, okay? So this is more paint than we usually use. See how thick I've got this? But I'm going to come right over our first flower, and I just dip the color, push it a little heavier right there, and curve in some pieces in there. All right, so you decide. I'm going to go ahead and put more orange in here again because I think we needed that color. See that? All right, and that's enough. We're going to put some a few more leaves in there. All right, isn't that one kind of pretty? I like that we have this and some orange here. We still have um, really bright yellow back there, but we're going to do one more. So we've got one, two, three, and then we'll fill in the greenery. All right, so let's turn this one this way. All right. Now this one is going to come way out here. Out here, I'm just getting it started so you see, okay? So I'm gonna wipe that brush. Every once in a while, wipe it, okay? And then pick up two colors and then decide if you want a yellow ochre on there. And then we can come back in here. So what I did here is I started small and wrapped it. Then we get a little bit more. Look at that. That looks good. See that? A little bit here, a little bit there. So white is opaque, and so it covers really well. And the yellow ochre covers pretty well, too. But most yellows are transparent. So when you're having a hard time covering, and come back in there with that white. See that? And touch it up again. So I just play with this until I get the petals like I want them. And see, this is all the same color. So I want to get pure, the moon yellow. There we go. See that? 
So see, there isn't any wrong. You just decide what color you want it and how big you want it. So look right here, push, lift, push, lift. And I'm gonna have that bright um, center showing in just a minute when we put the other colors in. Can you tell I'm still not happy there? <laughs> okay, all right, so now let's come right here. So push and then lift and alternate the colors. Push, push. And this is going over to the side a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna just pick up really good yellow right in here and we're gonna get some more yellow. Here's your moon yellow right here, okay? You can see over here I keep wiping this off. That's when I have too much paint on here. So the flat of the brush is what we're doing. And then as we add our color in there, look. All right, so we're gonna come in now with some extra green. Well, let's turn it around and see what we think here. All right. So I'm gonna come right around here. And I still think I need a little bit more white before we fix the center. So pure white. And this one's kind of closed up some. All right. Okay, before I do the center, I'm gonna come in here with my 12 citrus green and sap green again. All right, so I'm going to pull out with the citrus green and let the sap green grab a hold of the base of this chrysanthemum there the side view of this one. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of a green right there. And let's put a little leaf in here. All right. And I can come down here more than I did since my flowers hung over more. And this is when I decided right in here and needed a little bit more. But my flower got a little big. But that's uh, what I like about the way I lay out my, my plants, my flowers, my bouquets, is that I can then come in and add more without any problem. Okay, so we have a triangle here, a triangle there, and there's another triangle of, of colors. And so I'm, I'm not gonna even put this last one there because I think we have enough. All right, I can also put a little green leaf up there and pull a stem back, all right, and decide where you want it. I can enlarge this one a little bit, the greenery here, all right. Now, we're gonna go in a little bit more there. All right, so I wanna shade some around before we go in and add the purple, okay? We're gonna put purple all in around here, but I want to shade some red in here first. And before I leave, because I want to um, see this mix again, I'm going, because I got carried away here, I'm just going to add this back in here. So when we add the purple, we're going to get a really pretty color in here. So we have our depth in here, back in here. All right, and this one too, is as it's drying, you're seeing through it a little bit. And we won't when we shade it and float around it with purple. Dioxazine purple, by the way. All right, so let's get some of the floating medium and let's do a float. All right, y'all have done that with me a few times during this series, but let me show you. If we take our medium, all right, and we work it into our brush, all right, we're gonna get a little bit of red 
of apple red and work it in. Okay, and let's go right on that line. And we stop where the leaf is. I want to pull a little bit up here. Okay, a little bit there. And so this apple red, what I like about it is it's really bright and it gives you a really pretty nice feel. And I can come along here and intensify it even a little bit more there. So does that give a really nice look? I also sometimes like to come under here, but if I come under there, which is fine, I have to come back with my apple red and intensify here under the rim really quick. All right, now I just want you to know that you need to always let this totally dry and everything is pretty dry except a few leaves I added on, okay, before you start floating. All right, so we can float right here with, I want to pull our dioxazine purple here. That's my Prussian, here's my purple. All right, and I like over on a plain flat plate, I like to add my medium. So as I'm picking up the medium and working it in, you can see I still have the red in it, the apple red. There's my Prussian. No, that's my dioxazine purple. Okay. Now I don't want it wimpy. Let me show you the difference of a thin, if I use the medium, and then I come right here and I just get a little bit of dioxazine purple. See, to me that's wimpy. I want a strong amount so that as I'm putting it along here, as I put it along the pot, all right, I can get it stronger. See how strong that is? And then I can decide to move it out in to this area out here. All right. Now I have a lot of medium in there, probably more medium than I want to have. All right, so I can let that sit for a few minutes. All right, and let's go over here some. Now one thing I like to do is even when I put that purple, is I can come with my scruffy. This is my, my large scruffy. And I can pounce this in here. I can rub it in a little bit with the medium, but it pounce it. All right, so I'm gonna put a little bit of white. There's my wicker white and my dioxazine purple. Because I don't want this hard line here. And I, I should have kept working it in. But the way you lose that line is picking up the background color. Okay, a little bit more purple. Dioxazine purple is rich and intense and beautiful. We love this color back again, it's wonderful. There we go. Okay. Now I need to tap it out so it doesn't have a harsh line there. All right, so I have blues here, purples there, and I need more purple here. So dioxazine purple right along here. Okay, now I floated it first. Let's, let me show you if we go back again. You just kind of go along here and move it. Okay. Now what I like is if I've, if I've got it right here and I'm unhappy, I can just take a paper towel and because it has a sealer in it, which shocks people, they're like, oh my gosh. See, I can wipe off things I'm not happy with. All right. 
Okay, so sometimes I even like to come in here, but this is, I'm doing a no-no. <laughs> okay, all right, let me show you. I like to come in here and go around the dry leaf with a little bit of the purple, but I also use a wet brush as my eraser. Can you see that? A very clean wet brush. Okay, there we go. All right, so you decide if you like that look, but, and you can do it on all of them if you would like, and even underneath some leaves, all right? Now, let's go in here with the purple. Now, if you let this totally dry, or use your blow dryer to dry it, then you can come right in here, and if, what I like to do is when it's dry, you can come in here and decide oh, that wasn't a great color, or I used too much. And because that we have a, this beautiful finish on this paint, on the folk art multi-surface, you can come right in here and wipe off with a, a paper towel everything you just put if you're not happy, all right? But look how you get this deepness. See how pretty that is? So you see a little bit of the background, all right? A little bit of the background. All right, there we go. All right, now I did come back later and add just more purple right here as I was painting this, okay? So look, we're gonna come around and get each petal. You see that? Around each one. Okay, I bet you're already thinking about colors you could do with this, with our technique that we're learning here about the chrysanthemums. And you can think about different surfaces to put this on. I've just done one stem of a mom, which these chrysanthemums we use for moms for homecoming and stuff, right? Okay, there we go, a little bit. And I can even come in with the apple red again and add a little bit of that back in there. See how pretty that gets? Really richening the whole look. Okay, so we, I never need to leave it like this. I always put curly cues and everything else, but I think I like the way that it looks just like this. I like the way that I can put some um, more leaves right in here, right on top of in here. Look at this. We can add some more leaves up the side and into this area where this mom is, where it's hanging over. All right. Okay, guys. Okay, I'm gonna come down here and do a little highlight on that leaf too because I overstroke it there a little bit. Um, and you saw that the part I didn't like about that mom, I just put some leaves to cover it up. So that's okay too. And that's what I love about one stroke. You can blend, shade, and highlight with every stroke you make and you can fix anything you're not happy with and you can add and embellish it as much as you want. I can even come out here and add, like I could let, do a trailing one of these uh, baby chrysanthemums or the buds out here if I want to. I also want to show you how I sign my piece. All right, I'm going to take my two script liner and I'm going to come over here and let's do it in blue. And I dip it in water. Let me, let me dip in water three times and, and make it inky as we're going into our Prussian blue there. All right, so one, two, three. Then we roll it out. You'll find out this Prussian blue is a very rich, pretty color. See that? All right, so I want to make sure it's not pasty and it's not water. See, watery? It's in between. So make sure you have the, uh, the nice consistency. You roll it out, all right? And then let's sign. So I'm going to come here and I do all downward strokes. See that? 
which is easy because my name's Donna. <laughs> All right, you notice I don't put Dewberry, <laughs> those R's. Okay, so right in here, a little bit of what I think um, I would still do, guys. I want you to think about painting this up and creating um, what you would like to paint with your chrysanthemums. I love that you're painting and showing us all your work. Remember I said I was gonna come back if I wanted some white in here, a little bit more white. And so as it dried, it turned, the Prussian blue turned a little more blue on here. And look at the nice little strokes on here. Well, I enjoyed teaching you chrysanthemums today. And I'm excited about what we're gonna do next month. But meanwhile, practice, practice, practice those teaching guides and learn those strokes. Because every stroke you learn helps you do another flower or another stroke that you wanna learn. Okay, there we go. Did you know when you started painting with me today that you could take a daisy stroke, curve it a little bit and make beautiful blossoms like we just did? from the baby little bud that hasn't opened yet to the full blown blossom. Well, I had fun doing that. So now I want you to think about taking your folk art multi-surface paint with other luscious colors and make all these other beautiful chrysanthemum colors. And I want to share with you that if you do me a favor, you will make me very happy. Go to Les Paint with Plaid's Facebook site and show everybody what you're learning with me as we're painting together each month. And don't forget to come back for December because we are going to paint together the December Paper White Flower of the Month. It's paper whites. They're fun. I can't wait to share them with you. So come paint with me and paint and share. That's the best part of our lesson. Thank you.